Welcome to spring in Kumamoto. And while the plum blossoms are already blooming, I was still sewing my winter wardrobe. Which was this vintage inspired coat. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Bini Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. And it's finally time to make this coat that I actually had planned to make last year. So you might know or not know that I'm super into vintage dressing and also historical dressing. And I think when we talk about the 20th century, the late 1950s and early 1960s is absolutely my taste and this is probably what I would wear if I would dress vintage although I'm actually dressing kind of vintage because I'm wearing vintage kimono like every day I only have one really existing wardrobe and that is kimono and that's all I'm wearing every day so it wouldn't make sense to make like a lot of dresses and vintage inspired historical inspired dresses that I don't wear so I thought to give my vintage loving heart a little satisfaction I thought of making a 50s or 60s inspired swing coat that I could wear over kimono I am still not sure if this will work out. Probably the outcome will be awful and I'm gonna waste a lot of vintage, really nice wool. I'm just hoping it's gonna turn out well. Anyway, that's also why I've already made a mock-up. I have already drafted the pattern. Um, it's my first mock-up, so I'm gonna make a second one too to make a few changes as well as I did not make the color yet. So this is what you're going to follow me along from today on. <laughs> I actually give myself about two weeks to make this. I'm not sure if I will be able to make this in two weeks. This is a sewing book or magazine um, I'm going to use this time for help. It is from 1964 and it's actually in verse shape than my magazines from the 1930s, but still. I think a lot of you wanna see what's inside of this, so I'm just gonna open it up and show you a little. You can see, oh, this kimono style. Super typical for this time. Like, can you see like n n no color over here? Mm. And it's not, it's like super straightened out, but not like super straightened out. So if you know what I mean. <laughs> It's really pretty. It has a lot of nice pictures. And I'm just gonna jumping a little over. I was hoping to take off a color of one of those here. Um, probably this or this. We'll see which one is bigger. Or I'm just gonna make it bigger. And in the end of this book, they even show you how to make blankets. It's super sweet. Um, I like this one very much. I want to make this one one day, by the way. <laughs> oh, I want to have this nightgown as well. This is so cute. Anyway, I'm probably going to make a lot of stuff out of this magazine. Anyway, so this is this book in general and on the back they have a lot of codes and they also show you how to draft it, which is very cool. Which is exactly what I need because I can draft a color on the bias without any instruction. I just can't wrap my head around that. So usually you can see kimono codes are mostly straight and then get really slim on the bottom here. Um, which is like, yeah, it's a kimono coat. And a swing coat actually is very fluffy on the bottom because you usually would have um, the space for the petticoat. You would need all the space for the petticoat. So I thought to balance that out, I'm gonna um, 
fit the waist a little better, which you definitely wouldn't do with kimono clothing. And I had to do it when wearing kimono because it should look good when I have a kimono on. So this is what I did this morning off camera. And yeah, and I'm probably gonna use this color here from this coat or I'm gonna take this color here which is I think not this one they definitely gonna say use this color <laughs> so it's gonna be this color I haven't read the instruction yet I had I have read the instructions of this one here but not of this one yet so we will see um, I think it will turn out okay um, in the very end I still can just cut down all the fluffy parts and make it narrow to the bottom and then make a normal regular kimono coat you're gonna see what will turn out but you, you're in the future you probably already saw the picture of the thumbnail so you will know if it worked out or not <laughs> you already know I don't and it's scary okay yeah so I think I'm just gonna make the changes on my patterns now and start to draft the color Drafting the color was intimidating, but surprisingly worked at the first try. So I was ready to make all the final changes to my pattern. So I've done a test run on the color. <laughs> it worked out quite well. I want to double or probably even triple the width of it because I want a huge color on the front. And um, I've also redrafted my sleeves, but I noticed because it's this pattern is a weird mixture of a pre-existing co code that I already have and this part I need for the color because you can see here that the sleeve is part of the color. So when I want to use this color pattern, I have to put this into the sleeves, which I originally didn't. And then I tried to do it and now my sleeves are completely weird. So I'm gonna redraft the color according to this and I would just probably double or triple the width, we'll see. And I'm probably gonna use this pattern for the sleeves. So I'm gonna completely redraft my sleeves as well, which is probably the safer road and yeah, I should have done this in the beginning, but you know what? Experimenting is fun. <laughs> I have indeed doubled the width of the pattern, but after I had cut it out from the fabric, I noticed that it was way too big and I ended up using my mock-up pattern instead. As soon as my pattern was finished, it was time to cut out the parts of this gorgeous wool fabric I have picked up on Etsy. It was very expensive, but after hesitating a little, I ordered it. By the way, I have spent two years in total on finding the perfect fabric or buttons for this project. The wool was labeled as vintage in the shop, but I don't know which year and if it's really vintage, but it looks like it. As this was my very first time to work with such a heavy fabric, I brought a little piece of it to my sewing school and my teacher advised me to sew this project definitely by machine. And she was right. This fabric was a nightmare to hand stitch.
I based the pleats in I wanted to have on the back because this fabric also wouldn't let it press it. So basting was the key for this project. I pinned all the pieces together and sewed them. So I sewed on the sleeves yesterday and they worked out damn well. Although the right sleeve that I started with was a struggle and the left sleeve is actually a success, I would say. <laughs> I like how swooshy it is actually. I yesterday tried it on with normal clothing, non kimono clothing, and it looked really swing coat like. Right now, it just looks like a kimono coat, and then what's what well, that is what I was going for. And yeah, today I will start with the lining. So for the lining. I thought I'm gonna use silk kimono lining, which you probably wouldn't do, but I found this in a second hand store for about two euro, two dollars, and I thought I will have to piece a little bit, but come on, it's quality silk, so <laughs> this definitely makes a nice lining. As this is a normal kimono bowl, you can see that the width is not enough, so I will have to do a lot of piecing. And I will have to start to iron this. Before you start to sew with a kimono bowl, you do something that is called jinaoshi, which is basically just ironing the whole bowl. And this is what I'm gonna do now. By the way, in sewing school, you would really go like this, <laughs> directly on the fabric. Before piecing the lining together, I measured how much I need for every pattern piece. For cutting, I used a thread pulling method, which means you cut a small snip into the fabric and then you pull out some fiber or thread to mark out a straight line that you can cut along. This makes sure that all pieces are cut on the straight grain. After pressing the seams open, it was time to mark out the pattern on the lining and cut out the exact same pieces as the outer fabric. And make sure to do the exact same pieces because I didn't at first and it ended up in unnecessary frustration and me lying on the floor crying like a baby. <laughs> After I sewed together all the layers, I added a strip of wool on the front that will be the backing of my buttons. And I actually thought I have footage of this, but I didn't, and I'm sorry. I just came back from my in-laws because they had a Netflix problem and I solved it for them. And as always, they gave me lots of food. <laughs> Best Japanese snack ever. I had a dressing lesson with Lisa to, this morning, so while well, I already had the kimono on the mannequin, I thought this is perfect to actually figure out the pocket situation because I'm not quite sure if I can fit this on myself. This is the outer layer and the lining is here, everything is finished, I just have to put it together, which is super easy, but first of all I will have to figure out where to put the pocket. And I have never sewed pockets in my whole life because when you put on a kimono, you usually have enough pockets when 
on the kimono itself you, you know where to put your stuff usually i should make a youtube video about it so i've sent i sent my reference pictures to the ultimate sewing knowledge cloud called costube <laughs> Liz from Liz Caperson sent me a link to a blog to a pocket that is very close to what I'm going for. It's obviously a velt pocket with a very special design and I made a pocket mock-up just to be sure. So this is my pocket. So it's gonna be a welt pocket and I'm gonna probably place it somewhere here and yes if you have wondered I procrastinated already a week for actually finishing up this coat and I dyed my hair in the meanwhile it was supposed to be purple again but I ran out of pink so now it's blue I do not hate it but I wanted it actually purple <laughs> it's fine I do not hate it I'm actually quite happy with it but in a few weeks, I'm hopefully back to purple again. So let's do the pockets. I cut out two rectangles and folded them in half and sewed the edges together. I'm by the way not giving you a how to make these pockets. I have linked the blog post down below and also a video for well pockets that Christine Weig recommended. But you'll still get all the footage I have because the pockets were a success and a milestone in my life. So feel free to congratulate me in the comments. But I also want to be honest with you, it took me more than seven hours to sew in the pockets and I had more than one panic attack during this process that I really needed to stop right there after the pockets were done. On the next day, I took some time and worked in our garden. And then it was time to insert the lining. This far I only had made kimono in my life. And usually you start to sew together the bottom hem of lining and kimono. With this project I had to sew together the sides first and this was very irritating for me but I somehow made it work. After sewing the sides together, I pinned and basted my sewing down so I could press it later with a moist towel on top. Oh, and did I say basting? There was of course more basting before ironing. I also basted the hem to be able to press it super crisp. By the way, pressing with a moist towel on top of fabric is highly recommended for kimono making as well. In the past two days, I did only lining. So I sewed the lining in on the side and on the button, bottom, bo bo button, bottom. <laughs> is that the right pronunciation? Everything sounds so weird to me right now. <laughs> and I also did um, the sleeve openings of course and the only thing that is left for the lining is the collar and the collar eventually will fix um, lining and outer layer together what I'm doing here is probably I don't think so that this is pure kimono technique but when you sew a line kimono this is what you do so you sew on the lining except at the collar so you leave the collar open and then you pin all the most important seams of lining and outer layer together. So in this case, I did the center back seam. I have two sleeve um, seams here. So I'm also putting together sleeve seam and here where I already adjusted this one, um, where these two meet these, I think this is nine centimeter. And then you put it 
on a dress form or something else and you're gonna check if the lining pulls the outer layer somehow weirdly so the outer layer has some bump somewhere it's not hanging straight and if you find that you're gonna take off the pin at that place and gonna pull the outer layer or the lining to adjust it I did the same for the sleeves and the front and everywhere where you have to do this and now I'm quite happy with it I guess what I will do now is I'm going to baste this in place and then I'm going to sew on the collar, which is not so hard. At least this time. Kimono collars are awful, but I found out that when you, the closer you get to Western clothes, sewing on a collar is not that hard. <laughs> At least not as hard as the sleeves. Sleeves, sleeves are a struggle. I had already sewed the collar and back collar together and I understitched the seam allowance on the back collar. I pinned it secure with many 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 pins and stitched collar and coat together. And I did the other side by hand. If you wonder why kimono collars are harder to sew, here's the answer. It's because they're cut on the straight grain. And this makes it a horror to actually force them into a new shape. This type of collar is cut out on the bias, which makes it easier to form it in any shape you like. <sighs> so it's time to make the buttonholes. And I ended up not watching a tutorial. Um, I actually asked my mom what to do because the buttonhole maker I have at home does not work for the huge buttons I am planning to ma use for, make and use for this project. And they're 3.8 centimeter diameter and it's just too big for any buttonhole maker. And my mom advised me to do manual um, buttonholes because I don't like the handwork. And she advised me to just um, cut a snap into a piece of fabric that I have left over and check when the button will go through. And I ended up with having four centimeter length for this. And on the same scrap of fabric, I did some test runs with the buttonhole stitch on my machine. You can see it's really messy. And I even played with different tensions and it just didn't work out. And then I ended up to use this, this stitch here. Then I don't know how it's called in English and the Japanese was kind of weird, so just ignore it. It's probably not the best thing to use for a buttonhole, but it looks so good on this fabric. I do think that probably my machine is not good to work with wool and thicker fabrics and that's why just most of the stitching does look not good at all. And yeah, so I'm just gonna draw a straight line and do two of those rows on the side and the ends here. I probably will make them by hand and if I make a good job with doing the ends by hand I'm probably gonna also stitch around the edge by hand. We'll see if I'm gonna do it or not. Um, yeah, so let's go and make the buttonholes and the buttons, by the way. Do you wanna know the best thing here is? I made officially the last seam on my sewing machine and the bobbin lasted exactly until right now which means the sewing gods are telling me i did a good job and i'm officially done on the machine i have to admit the buttonholes were more than unspectacular and quite easy to make but i'm also sure it's because they were this big and smaller buttonholes are for sure harder to do for the buttons, I couldn't find anything nice, so I decided to make covered buttons and I bought a kit for it at a Daiso, a 100 yen store. It contains everything you need to make covered buttons. And they were a pleasure to sew on.
I am extremely happy how this coat turned out. I am not so happy how this head turned out because I did not calculate how tall we'll actually get after having all the padding in. Um, I will change that. They're super easy to alter so I think I'm gonna do this um, the next weekend. But so far I am extremely happy with the all-in-all -all look. I think also it looks extremely vintage, which definitely is also, also thanks to this fabric, of course. And I wasn't sure if I want to digitize this pattern or not, but my patron said yes, please do. So I will put this pattern on my Patreon page, not today, probably somewhere next month. So when you watch this in the future, after March 2021, be assured that the pattern for this code is at least my size on my Patreon page. Lastly, I want to apologize that I went down from posting videos weekly to only twice a month which is just because it's getting sewing heavier here and the sewing heavier this channel gets, the more time I need to produce a video because I actually have also to sew and finish projects to make a video. So I want to apologize for that and I hope um, you're actually fine with that. I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave me a thumb up or tell me in the comments or both. <laughs> And when you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher, make sure to subscribe. And I talk to you in my next video. Bye!